For those of you who don't know me, I'm Laura Bandy. I'm an English instructor here on the Canton campus. And today I'm going to be presenting uh, uh, based around our college theme, Who Can, We Can, The Will to Overcome, Finding Joy in Challenging Times. And I really want to think about how difficult it can be to remember joy. And when I talk about joy, I'm not just talking about like fleeting happiness. We're talking about deep-rooted joy, inspired, and it inspires others. Uh, and it's something that when we're in challenging times, we can kind of forget how important that is. So I want to remind us today. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the polka dot man later, if anybody's seen Suicide Squad. I really just included him because he matches my design, but also because he brings me joy. I'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, Suicide Squad uh, doesn't seem like a joyful movie, but you can find it. Um, and I wanted to remind everybody that we have more college themed presentations coming at you soon. Professor Oatley, October 5th, Tuesday, October 5th, and Professor Zellman on October 20th. So you're encouraged to come for those presentations as well. So, why do we need to search for joy in 2021? Why is this so important? We could talk about it in a kind of larger cultural sense, but I want to focus on you guys, college students. And I looked at a survey from April 2021, Best Colleges, and found some troubling statistics. I'm going to try to share with both sides of the room here. But I'll start over here. Uh, the first one says over 90% of college students have experienced negative mental health symptoms due to the pandemic, due to this difficult time. Um, that's a lot, over 90%. Right? Shocking. Nearly half of all students struggle with isolation, anxiety, and lack of focus. It's terrible. It gets in the way of everything, especially joy. And students have also found it difficult to participate in online classes and to finish and be successful with their work, with their classwork. So these are serious problems, right? So much stress. We have a lot to overcome. But how to find joy, especially when your bed is so comfy. I know mine is. And it's hard to wake up. And sometimes I have a sad. And I don't want to get out of bed. And I'm guessing I'm not the only one. So we have to remind ourselves of the importance and the centrality of joy and how we deserve it. So I have a patented three-step system. Laura Bandy's patented three-step system, the three C's, consultation, connection, and creativity. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about these three steps. So first of all, consultation. You guys are college students. You know how to do research. Be a wise owl. Look for helpers in the world, like Mr. Rogers told us. Consult credible sources, such as books and articles by trusted minds, who speak to the need and methods necessary in finding joy. We have an amazing library here and an amazing librarian, Jeanette Glover. If you want to go in and talk to her in the Learning Resource Center, she can help you find these sources. I've got, this is just a handful of some of the titles I found. How Happiness Happens by Max Lucado, Stumbling on Happiness, Joy Seekers, Find Your Joy, Let Go of What's Holding You Back, 10 ways, 101 Ways to Free Your Spirit and Dance with Life. There's so many great resources out there. And if you enjoy reading or maybe listening to books on tape, this can be a good way to go. So, as I said, you want to look for helpers in the world. You want to consult friends, family, trusted adults, or you know, any humans um, that have good advice in this area. I actually polled some of my students and asked them, what are their methods for seeking joy in challenging times? What did they do when they were at home alone, isolated, and couldn't go out or feeling scared? Because if you haven't noticed, you know, there's, there's a pandemic. Things are happening. So, so how do we? move past some of those feelings of anxiety and stress and isolation. And I got a nice list here. I don't know if you can see it. My font's kind of small because I wanted to include everything my students mentioned. There was a lot of talk of cookies, baking, cake. I don't bake at all, but I sure like it when other people do, and I will eat those cookies. Take lots of walks and bike rides just to be outside in the fresh air. Somebody mentioned disc golf, which I've never played, but you know, just getting outside and getting some oxygen in your lungs, it feels great. Reminds you that there's a world outside. Uh, clean everything. I was surprised at how many students said they went on like cleaning menus and just scrubbed everything down. 
and uh, rearranged their bedrooms. I had a couple students say they built new bedroom furniture, which I thought was very enterprising of them. Painted the walls new and fun colors. One student specifically said he kept a joy journal to remind himself of the good times. So he wouldn't forget. I thought that was really beautiful. Of course, working out, exercising to feel strong, get those serotonin boosts. That's always a good way to uh, feel good. Staying caught up on schoolwork so you don't freak out later. I think that's uh, a wise thing to avoid those freak outs. Self-care, whatever that means to you. For me, it means going and buying all those fall scented candles. It's, it's the pumpkin time. I bought some pumpkin spice coffee. I don't even like it, but I felt like I needed to buy it. <laughs> Meditate, pamper yourself, you know, more on that in just a second. The importance of self-care. Playing your favorite video games. I, I really like Viva Pinata, which is a game where you're a pinata, and then you hang out with other pinatas, and you make a garden. And that's the game. <laughs> it brings me great joy. Uh, Super Mario Kart, that was very good back in the day. I might get back into it. But whatever your video game is, it's a, it's a great way to keep your mind moving and have some fun. You know, get a dog. So many of my students talked about the, their animals and uh, means of finding joy. Hanging out with your pets, rescuing, fostering, um, doing this every day, joyful romping hours, and cats. I want to make a plug for cats. We always talk about dogs, but cats are wonderful too, especially kittens for all the obvious fluffy and cuteness related reasons. Volunteer. I have several students who work at rescue shelters or other philanthropic organizations. And of course, we know that helping others helps us too. Going on long drives in your car with your friends and listen to your favorite music at loud volumes. It's wonderful just to get in the car and drive. And of course, one of my favorites, watch your favorite movies or television shows under a fuzzy blanket with fresh popped popcorn and homemade lemonade or whatever snacks and beverage you like. It's a great way to find joy, to kind of remind yourself of the stories out there. Also, when we think about self-care, that means consulting, asking for help when you need it. And I wanted to just include this because I, I'm not sure if everybody knows that Spoon River College offers each student up to 10 free counseling sessions per semester. That's great. Andrea White is our counselor. She is wonderful. She's really helped me sometimes when I've been alone. So take advantage of this. If you're feeling stressed or having academic struggles, depression, anxiety, anything, you know, go to Andrea and, and make those appointments. It's really, really a great way to take care of yourself. We also have a wellness fair coming up. Let's see, in Canton next Tuesday, the lower levels of the centers from 11 to 1, and on the Macomb campus on Wednesday, 11 to 1. Counseling services, fitness resources, crisis services. There was talk of therapy animals. I'm not sure if they're going to be there, but eventually we're hoping to have those come. But this is a great way to remind yourself of what's out there for you in order to help you take care of yourself. And there will be treats. And there is a, a raffle you can put your name into with a wellness basket. So I'm encouraging you to seek that out. And the, the second C in my patented 3C system is connection. I love this. This is one of my favorite all-time quotes by the novelist Ian Forrester, who's made famous for Passage to India, Howard's End, A Room with a View. Oh my gosh, you guys. If you're in the mood for like a love story, the most romantic love story maybe, this, oh, oh, pretty soon he's going to come across this waving knee and smooch her. And it's <laughs> one of the most beautiful, oh my gosh. And this is Helena Bonham Carter, if you know her uh, from Fight Club or Tim Burton movies. She was only 19 when she made this film. Gorgeous, just a cloud of hair, beautiful. So Ian Forrester said, only connect. Live in fragments no longer, only connect. But what does it mean to connect in a disconnected age? So we've got the obligatory uh, Oxford English Dictionary definition. Obviously, two or more people coming together having the same cause, origin, values, goals. But in general, we know that without connection, we're fragments. Like lost puzzle pieces, we're lonely, sensing that the bigger picture is incomplete without our contribution. We must connect to bring the larger picture into focus and understand our fundamental human purpose, which is to love and be loved. That's why we're here. Too much, ooh, should be another, other. Too much isolation is bad, sad, and depression making for humans. Finish the picture, connect, and find your joy. So again, how do we connect? Going back to those consultation uh, inclusions on the list I had earlier, you can turn those into connections. Everything you can do by yourself, most things, 
you can do with others, right? So if you're having a, a baking frenzy, do a cookie baking night. Maybe have awards for the best decorated cookies. Take those long walks and bicycle rides with, with your friends, with fellow nature lovers. Visit a pumpkin patch with your pals. I am absolutely going to do that. Ooh, there's a pumpkin patch I go to that makes their own apple donuts. They're so good. Go to the gym with a friend. Um, you know, have a workout buddy or a study buddy. Play those favorite video games with other gamer folk. You can connect virtually. And so many students tell me that's how they stayed social when they were stuck at home, right? So you can also join some organizations here at Spoon. We have so many opportunities. Intramural sports, uh, speech and debate team, art club, Phi Theta Kappa, Phi Mu Tau. Am I saying that right? Student government, student nurses, Kaleidoscope Literary Arts Journal, and theater opportunities, as well as volunteering opportunities through Habitat for Habitat for Humanity and Peeps Club, People for the Earth's Environmental Preservation Society. I'm talking really fast to fit all this in. Take those long country drives with best pals, count cows, play music at loud decibels, all the fun stuff you do on drives. Take a road trip with your best friends. Throw a theme movie night. Get together with costumes. You could watch Monsters, Inc., which was a movie I'd never seen until my students told me about it, and I absolutely love it. And don't forget family. Hug your mom. Squeeze your little brother until he giggles. Play cards with your grandma. Beat your dad at basketball. Break out the board games. Find joy. Connect. Whew, creativity. Yes, this one is near and dear to my heart, but I want to remind everybody you don't have to be a professional artist to get creative. In fact, creativity lights up in many ways, all of which can bring you tremendous joy. So students get creative. I included a few images here. Some of these are from Kaleidoscope, Mary Toothaker, her photograph here, Rog, Colin Schultz's photo, and then all of our wonderful athletes and thespians. I did have a student who built a robot just for fun of these got creative. He's like, I want to build a robot. Cool. Uh, I have a student who had a, a makeup tutorial channel on YouTube just because she wanted to. She's got creative. She's like, I did it. Now she has a bunch of followers. So this is happening. Students are already creative in their own lives. You can do this too. For me personally, my creative joy is writing. And I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about that. First, coming back to the polka dot man. I tried to watch Suicide Squad, but it was too late and I fell asleep. But I stayed awake long enough <laughs> to see the polka dot man, who is a super villain. So just to back up a little bit, I used to write for an online journal to smile politely, but they wouldn't let me do movie reviews. Because there was a dude who was already doing them, and he had a stranglehold on it, and I didn't get to. So I was like, I'm going to write my own movie, movie reviews. And that's what I do. And I send them to my friends and my family, even though they didn't ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> Completely unsolicited. And it's good that I do that and it's not published, because the last one was just me talking about how much joy it gave me to see the part of Suicide Squad I saw before I fell asleep. And the polka dot man is a supervillain whose power is throwing polka dots. And then sometimes they show up on his face, and he has to go behind a bush and just like bleh, and then all the polka dots just kind of comes filling out of him. And it's beautiful, and it's terrifying. <laughs> and I just wrote about it and told my my friends and family, and they were like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. But it, it gave me a lot of joy. So that's something I do for fun. And I also write poetry. It is my greatest joy. And I'm always trying to kind of pull people to my side. Sometimes they tell me that poetry is intimidating, or challenging, or old fashioned. And I say, do you like Dr. Seuss? Do you like Shel Silverstein? Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. Do you like, I don't know, Green Eggs and Ham? All of these are poems that you grew up with, right? And you can remind yourself of that childlike wonder. Poetry is also music, right? The lyrics, the song lyrics. I recently taught an essay called Bedtime Songs. First semester I taught it. And my students really seemed to enjoy it. And we talked about what are good time songs. In the article, Keith Slayman talked about Beyonce and Janelle Monet uh, with Prince giving them what they love. I'm sharper than a razor. Eyes made of lasers, bolder than the truth. They won't be locked up in the system because I'm on a mission. Blame it on my youth. That's poetry. I also had a student who said her parents used to sing My Girl to her. I said, that's kind of a little I thought that was so beautiful. I had to include Frank Zappa. This is before y'all's time, but my husband loves him. And he was a wild dude from the 60s and 70s. His poetry was 
watch out where the huskies go and don't eat that yellow snow. So those are words to live by, I guess. You made me promise to include that. So anyway, I hang out on poetry Twitter because I like to see what the poets are up to. These are some of the, including myself, these are some of the quotes that I really like. I'll just read a couple to you. Poems are like dreams. In them you put what you don't know you know. What's inside you comes out on the page. Poetry is the language of intensity. Because we're going to die, an expression of intensity is justified. We're not going to be here forever. Write it down. Make it beautiful. I have a quick story to tell if I have time here. Just a couple minutes. I don't know if you guys are familiar with acrostics. This is a form of poetry where the first letter of each line forms its own little message. My first poetry writing class was my first semester of college. It's about y'all's age. I was really nervous. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know how to write poetry. I knew I liked it. I had to write poems and read them out loud. I had to listen to other classmates' poems and give them feedback. It was so challenging. And one student named Brian, I really liked him. We hung out. He introduced me to South Park and uh, John Woo movies. And he wrote great poems. And we got to be friends. And I was like, yeah, I made a friend. It's really hard to make friends. And one day he came to class and he read a poem about a carousel. And I was like, oh, that's beautiful. He's talking about like the ride and how it's spinning really fast and he wants to stop and enjoy it. It's so beautiful. I was like, I really like that story. I showed the poem to my sister and she's like, this is dedicated to LB. I'm like, yeah, somebody with the initials LB. And she said, your name starts with the initials LB. And she said, you know, this is an acrostic. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And along the side of the poem, it said, my heart belongs to you, my dear. He'd written it to me. Isn't that sweet? He thought, I guess I was somebody who could bring him joy, but I never talked to him again because I was too shy. So. <laughs> about that a lot. Wherever you are, Brian, I'm sorry. But I got my joy because I fell in love with poetry. And I wrote an acrostic for y'all. I wanted to do it kind of together, but I knew we wouldn't have time. So in celebration of Brian, Brian Campus, wherever he is, this is my acrostic for us. And you can see here on the left side, it says, who can? We can. What we know is that these are hard times. How do we keep on not given to this bear? Can we find the strength together, a shared willingness, a pinky swear pact, not to stop moving forward, not to forget what we mean to one another. Remember, everything. We mean everything to each other. Clasped hands, quiet smiles, even behind the mask, a long hug when we can. And you, will you come with me, friend? Because I need you with me on life's path, and I hope you need me too. So remember, the three C's, consultation, connection, creativity. I want to end on these images. I always tell my students it's, it's a really strong move to end on an image. These are from the Atlantic Magazine's Hopeful Images from 2020. I just love them. This is a little girl in the UK in, I think it was September, no, May 2020, saying thank you to the National Health Service health workers. This was on National Nurses Day. This was in Queens, New York, all the nurses and health workers giving hearts to say thank you to their patients and to, to everyone, just to, to send out that love. This was a, uh, a doctor in Mexico City and her therapy dog, Harley. And she's just gazing into his eyes, right? Here we have two roller skating dancers in Harlem. I absolutely love that. This was John Silo, the president of the class, graduated in 2020, jumping for joy found his joy. <laughs> and I love this. This is Sammy the Seal. <laughs> Outside New York City, he just jumps on paddle boards of tourists. He's like, I'm going for a run. <laughs> and that's joyful. So poetry is my joy. Connection is my joy. What's yours? Go and get it. Thank you. questions, but I don't think we have time. So if you have any questions about creativity or poetry or any of this stuff, come talk to me. Thanks a lot for coming.